Now, on our lesson today, lesson 13, is part two of the discerning of spirits. The gifts, the spiritual gifts, discerning of spirits. We dealt with last week on what discerning of spirits is. But we also said that this gift completes the cycle of the revelation gifts because discerning of spirits is gifts of revelation just as the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. They're revelation gifts. Everything within the realm of knowing facts, events, purposes, motive, origin, destiny, human, divine or devilish, natural or supernatural, past, present, or future comes within the focal range of one or the other of the three gifts. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, or discerning of spirits. They include the comprehensive survey of all that God knows. That's past, present, present, and future. Right? Amen. So everything God knows. And there is nothing that God knows that may not be made known to man. As the Spirit wills through the agency of one of these gifts. He can make known to man as he will through one of these gifts of everything that he knows. We said that the gift was entirely supernatural. Remember? It differs from the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge in that its objects as well as its operations is entirely supernatural. Supernatural. This is clearly implied in its name, discerning of spirits. The other revelation gifts we see, the other revelation gifts uh, didn't change, did it? Okay. Though equally supernatural in their operation, are not equally supernatural in the things that they reveal. This is just going over things that we went over last week. Discerning of spirits, it shows in a miracle, the miracle source, remember we were saying that? Of a miracle. It indicates its true character, whether heavenly or hellish. So it deals with the source, the miracle source. In the Greek, we have the word there, and it's pronounced the ek renown. And it discerns, okay, means to recognize, to discriminate, to evaluate, to judge rightly, to distinguish, or to be able to tell the difference between two or more things. Remember we discussed that? The other hand, discerning of spirits is the ability to discern the spirit world. Whether something is divine, God or angels, whether it's human, natural origin, or demonic, same, Satan and demons. So that's what we're dealing with in discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits, we said, it gives supernatural insight into the secret realm of the spirits. We don't know about the spirit world, do we? So for us to know anything concrete, solid from the spirit world about it, then we have to be, that has to be revealed to us by the Lord. Now, the devil can reveal things to you, but then that's where discerning the spirits come in. To know the difference between the spirit of God and the spirit of demons. It reveals the kind of spirit that is actuating a person who is manifesting supernatural knowledge or power at the time that the miracle is actually taking place. Just like we see all these miracle workers in our day. It's hard to tell whether they're true or whether they're false. Looks like they're true, and then when we hear about all the whole bunch of stuff that was going on, then we're just like, wow. How can all those things be done by somebody that's so ungodly? The demons are in control of this domain. 
Right now, I mean, they don't control God. He has the ultimate control, but he's giving them the prince and the power of the air here. You know, there's domain, so they have certain powers, and they can, you know, go, go with their people and give them miraculous powers as well. But we have to know the difference. And the Bible tells us that if it were possible, they'd even fool the very elect. By its operations, we may know the true source and the nature of any supernatural manifestation, whether divine or satanic. And the character of such a spiritual manifestation can only be determined by the use of that gift. Then we talked about some of the things that uh, discerning the spirits is not, okay? We said discerning the spirits is not to be looked upon as a kind of spiritual thought reading. We also went over the fact that there are three kinds of spirits, the divine, the satanic, and the human. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, that the human body consists of mind, soul, I mean spirit, soul, and body. Am I right? So it lets us know that we have a spirit. All right. From there, we talked about, and I didn't go much further there. We talked somewhat about distinguishing the real and the imaginary possessors, possessors of spiritual gifts. We said that uh, it had been stated that recipients of the gift could distinguish between the real and the imaginary possessors of spiritual gifts. Uh, we talked about the people in Corinth. Remember we said that the trouble in Corinth and the early church was not concerning the real and imaginary possessors of spiritual gifts, but between the true and the false miraculous manifestations. See, because we said that we, they seen miracles being done. So it wasn't so much whether the possessors of those were real or false as to whether the actual happening that was going on, whether that spiritual gift that was being done right at that moment was true or false. And the only way you tell that is through the discerning of the spirits. Why? Because they deal with the spirit world. They don't have to deal with the man. <laughs> they deal with the spirit world whether it is true or false that's what matters because if it's true that's what you want to follow if it's false I don't care who the man is you don't want to follow that <laughs> you know? or who the person is so an imaginary possessor of a gift could work no miracle we said that was another thing I just contradicted myself there. But a possessor, I understand what it's saying here, an imaginary possessor, an imaginary possessor. I'm not talking about one that is true. There is true evil possessors. But an imaginary possessor is one that is just an imaginary. He really doesn't possess the gift. So if he really doesn't possess a gift, whether it is true or false, whether it was angelic or, or uh, from God himself, if he doesn't possess the gift, then he can work no miracles. He's just a con artist. You see what I'm saying? He can really work no miracle because he's just an imaginary possessor. But an actual possessor, listen, an actual possessor of a counterfeit satan satanic gift could work mighty miracles. As we shall see, the Antichrist and his entourage, you know, the false prophet, remember? That's going to happen. They're going to work mighty miracles. Right? The Bible tells us that. So they are actual possessors, not imaginary ones but actual possessors of counterfeit, satanic gifts. Then we said counterfeit because we know that Christ has the true gifts. 
So anything other than what Christ has is going to be a counterfeit. That's why we label the one that has it the anti-Christ. So the gift was and is to make the distinction. The gift, the discerning of spirits, is to make the distinction perfectly clear in a miracle of revelation. It is one of the revelation gifts. God reveals to you which one is true and which one is false. We said, discerning of spirits is not psychological insight. Psychological insight, insofar as it is concerned simply with analysis of human character and mental phenomena, is a development of human powers of judgment. Now, when we're talking about uh, psychological insight, then we're dealing with as what a spiritist, I'm sure you know what those are, a palm reader, crystal gazers. They really reveal some secret in a life that measure uh, of the supernatural has its source, that measure of the supernatural has its source in the pit. Many of the magic mongers are pure frauds, frauds rather, many of them. A lot of the crystal gazers, they're not true, they're just frauds. A lot of the palm readers, they're not true, they're just false. But you do have palm readers that can read because they are gifted from the enemy. <laughs> you do have crystal readers that have that gift from the enemy, from the pit. Those are real crystal gazers, but they're not godly. Just like witches. <laughs> they're not godly. Only the three spirit inspirational gifts intended for the edification of believers in the believers meeting operate at the will of man. The will of man we're talking about. That's going to be the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. These operate by the will of man. God comes upon us with the supernatural gift and we speak. Right? We speak in tongues. We interpret the tongue. We speak for it. We speak for another in prophecy. Right? But, right here, clairvoyance. What is that? Seeing what is not normally Seen. Hypnotism. Magic. Occultism. Witchcraft. Sorcery. Spiritism. All these are real supernatural forces producing miracles. All of them. They produce miracles. But all responding as they do to the perverted will of man. <laughs> and they are satanic in their origin. We talked about also, and I don't even have to spend time on this, that discerning of spirits is not the power to do what? Discover, Discover faults in others. I found out, I know, I know, I know, I discern your spirit. You're a nasty rascal. You know, <laughs> that's not what it's all about, is it? So we're supposed to love one another. So as we, let's climax this tonight and go over some of the present day uses of a gift. Okay, and the present day uses of the gift are just as they were before, as, as they were in the scripture. What? To help in delivering the afflicted the oppressed, and the tormented. Can you, can you agree with that? I mean, this is, this is a solid, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, 
I can't get the word I want to say. In other words, I wanted, I got ready to say constructive way, but that, that may work, of using the gift to help in delivering the afflicted, the present torment. Demon possession is yet responsible right today for cases of mental derangement. Demon possession is. Minds are still wrecked and driven by cruel, tormenting spirits. Today, they're lashing into frenzies, pressing into violent acts, and urging to self-destruction, suicide, jumping off of bridges. Huh? Today we see it in the drug world. Demon just got these folks schizophrenic. Look at them. Demon just got them just taking their minds, taking their bodies, taking control. You even see these people now that commit some of these acts say the devil told them to do it or they heard a voice. You know, and they're hearing something. What they're hearing is real. It's not just all imaginary. And they're doing deadly things. Dreadful asylums are filled with mental wrecks that we are no longer interested in. They're locked away in asylum, need help, just pumping them with medicine day in and day out. We don't even think about them. Men and women who ought to be loose by the gifts of the Spirit and not bound with change by the helpless authorities. They're still out there. Youthful hearts are driven by unclean spirits. They're trying to teach them any and everything is okay. <laughs> you know? They don't tell them anything about guilt. <laughs> they, don't, they don't preach a whole lot to them about hell anymore. You know? But they're driven by unclean spirits. And then they're revolting talk. They're, they're, these youth, they're revolting talk. It's terrible. Obscene behavior. And then they come up with unspeakable diseases. They don't know what's going on. Where all they've been and what all they've been doing. All happening. The power of speech is robbed by dumb spirits. Still happening, just like in the Bible days. Am I right? None of that's changed. The light of day is darkened by blind spirits. And they are groping about, seeking for someone to lead them. The frames and the limbs of beloved mothers and tiny children are distorted and twisted and held by spirits of infirmity. Still. These are cases, not for osteopaths, not for chiropractors and psychotherapists, but for simple believers <laughs> equipped with the gifts of the Spirit. That's what we got all of this for. Not to hide it in the corner, but to use it. We're supposed to be able to tell the difference in what is true and what is false if we're praying people. Some of the other uses to discover a, ser a servant of the devil. For example, Acts 13 chapter, around 9th and 10th verse. It was when Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost that he set his eyes on Elimus, the sorcerer. The sorcerer now, okay? That he discerned the evil spirits actuating this child of the devil. And this was a case of simple discovery. Not deliverance, just simple discovery. He referred to him as the child of the devil. 
The sin of Elimus was the willing and determined subjection to demon authority. Listen to that. The willing and determined subjection to demon authority. Hence, this terrible punishment of blindness by the hand of the Lord. Then we look at to aid in checking the plans of the adversary. The devil got plans against God's people. Discernment can aid in checking the plans of the adversary because these are where? In the spirit world, aren't they? In the spirit world. At Philippi, Acts chapter 16, verse 16. A poor young woman possessed with a spirit of divination, demon powers. Coming, divination coming from the word python, meaning serpent, was employed by that old serpent. You know what Paul says? To hinder the work of the Lord. In many days enduring the buffets of this messenger of Satan, Paul discerned the evil spirit and cast it out in the name of Christ. He did what? He discerned that evil spirit and did what? Cast it out. Spirit world. A wicked master then was deprived of his gains. A wretched woman was delivered from the enemy. The servants of the Lord were ridden of a demon voice that had endeavored to subvert the purpose of the Almighty. But unlike wicked Elimus, this poor woman was an unwilling agent of the evil one who had stolen her voice for his evil ends. Another present day use of the gift to expose plausible error, seducing spirits, lying spirits are responsible for doctrines of devils. <laughs> and they're responsible for damnable heresies, an opinion or a belief that contradicts established religious teaching. They're responsible for that. There's many a foul demon under the clerical cloak nowadays. <laughs> you know? A whole lot of old foul demons. They, you know, I, I, was, I, was, I was at one place and, and, and the preacher started cussing. The guy asked him a question, he started cussing. And the guy said, did you hear what he said? <laughs> he said, and he repeated what I said. I said, he didn't say that, did he? He said, yes, he did. <laughs> he said, but he's allowed to cuss. <laughs> so, so this is, you know, they're wearing a the cloak. They're wearing a collar. Am I right? But they're not making the right example. They're not making the right example. And that causes problems. Many a foul demon under the clerical cloak today, preaching with pleasing voice and, and specious, Ill, telling illogical lies instead of the truth. We have that. They deny the divinity. They deny the virgin birth. They don't really believe in that. Godly people believe in that because we believe God can do all things. We believe there's nothing impossible for God. But that's illogical to them. That's not scientifically possible. So they don't accept it and they don't really preach it. They, they even say that the miracles are not for today. They talk about the saving blood of the Lord, but they deny in the reality of sin, they deny in the reality of the devil. even divine wrath. And they tell you sometimes that God is too good of a God to send people to hell. Mm -hmm. I've heard it. <laughs> you know? I've heard it. 
But when these devilish doctrines are accompanied as they are in many forms of spiritism with the devilish signs and wonders, we need this blessed gift to discern between the evil disguises. We need it. We need God. Lastly, to unmask demon miracle workers. Wherever there is a true, <laughs> there must of necessity be the false. Twelve seven. Am I right? Satanic signs and lying wonders in the Second Thessalonians two and nine are the most substantial proof of the existence of the divine real signs and wonders. The Bible gives them to us. The success of the counterfeit, the success, hear me now, the success of the counterfeit is in its likeness to the real. Every time somebody puts something really good out on the market, it ain't long before you see something that looks just like it. <laughs> you know? Am I right? Amen. So the success of the counterfeit that you see coming out later is, into, is in its likeness to that which is real. So the devil can fool a lot of people because he looks real. What he's doing is so real. The Bible said, as I said a little earlier, if it were possible, he would fool even the very elect. It's just that real. Am I right? Amen. Apart from the gifts of the spirit, the very saints would be deceived by the spirit of devils working miracles. Revelation 16 and 14. So the gift of the Spirit does not necessarily carry with it the power to exercise. It can discern, right? But it doesn't carry with it the power to exercise evil spirits, even when they are discerned. Gifts are power. Gifts of power that we're going to get into in the future are required in addition for this. So one gift can discern that spirit, but the other gift can cast it out. Right? Just as we've seen here in the illustration with Paul. The very existence, as we close, the very existence of the gift proves the present reality of evil spirits. If we didn't have evil spirits, if we didn't have these likenesses of the truth, then we wouldn't really need that gift, would we? <laughs> but the fact that God has given the church the gift shows how much the present reality of evil spirits is here. They are wrecking and torturing human beings as cruelly as in the Lord's day. There we come down from the peaks of selfish blessing and spiritual exaltation and seek earnestly such gifts. Is it fear? Listen to this. Or unbelief? Or just our desire to be at ease in Zion that holds us continually in our shelters of comfort? other than going about and doing God's will. God is calling. <laughs> he needs folk to be ready, to be used, that he can endow supernaturally, miraculously with these gifts so that they can step out and work for him and bring demon, uh, demon powers and demon spirits under subjection. That's what God needs. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you've given us on today. We thank you for how you blessed us and led us and guide us 
to do that which is right and real. We thank you for the wisdom and knowledge that you've given unto us. Bless us as we go to our several places. Keep us and take care of us. And those that are not here, oh God, that those that are on the prayer list, look upon them and bless them. And bless us as we come again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.